Are not these words a faithful explanation of the reign of the emperor? Nevertheless, one hears some French voices prefer unjust accusations, repeating, for example, that the governor of Napoleon was the governor of the sword. If that opinion could have become general, there would have been occasion to exclaim with Montesquieu, woe to the reputation of the prince who is oppressed by a party which becomes dominant, or who has endeavored to destroy a prejudice which survives him? Never, in fact, was the internal administration of power less military in its character than that of the emperor. In all his acts, we recognize the tendency to give civil order preeminence over military order under the imperial regime. No post of civil administration was held by military men. He who created civil dignities to balance the dignities of the army, who, by the institution of the Legion of Honor, wished to reward in the same manner the services of the citizen and those of the soldier, who, from the instant of his accession to power, occupied himself with the lot of the civil employees of the government, who gave always precedence to civil officers, who in the interior and even in conquered territories sent as envoys, counselors of state closed with an administrative authority superior to that of the generals, such is the man whom party spirit has wished to represent as a partisan of a military regime. It has been made a subject to complaint that the uniform of military discipline was introduced into the Sams. But is it wrong to diffuse in the nation a military spirit? That spirit which awakens the most noble passions, honor, disinterestedness, patriotism, and which creates habits of order, regularity, and submission to authority. The military spirit is dangerous only when it is the exclusive property of a caste. As to the military uniform, the emperor caused it to be adopted in the Lyceums and the special schools with a view to equality. One day when he visited the Pyrenee of saint Cyr, his feelings were shocked at the difference which excited in the clothes of the pupils, some wearing a fashionable costume while others were ragged. The emperor declared that he would have no distinction in dress among the pupils, that equality ought to be the first element of education, and he caused to be given to all the same uniform. Finally, it was a strange sort of military government, one in which the tranquility of the vast empire was maintained without a soldier while the emperor and the army were 800 leagues from the capital. And further, the imperial eagles, which so many laurels had illustrated, were never defiled by French blood shed by French soldiers. Few governments can say as much of their flag. The praise of the emperors in his deeds. It is sufficient to turn over the pages of the monitor. His glory is like the sun. He is blind who is, does not see it. Obscured detractors cannot count to veil upon X. A few drops of ink cannot alter the color of the sea. Nevertheless, as there are vulgar minds which cannot comprehend that which is great, and as in epics of transition party spirit disfigures great historical features, it may not be amiss to remind the masses who feel such admiration for the emperor that the veneration is not based upon the deceitful show of a vain glory, but upon the just appreciation of actions which had for their object the happiness of humanity. And if in the celestial region where his great soul now reposes in peace, Napoleon could still be troubled by the agitations and the opinions which are in conflict here below, might not his indignant shade thus answer his accusers all that i have done for the prosperity of france i have to accomplish in the intervals of battles but you who accuse me what have you done during 24 years of profound peace have you reconciled discords and united the parties around the altar of the country have you distributed among the different powers of the state, the moral weight which the law concedes and which is a pledge of stability, have you given to your chamber of peers the democratic organization of my Senate? Have you preserved to the Council of State its salutary influence and beneficent functions? Have you preserved in the Legion of Honor the purity and prestige of its first organization? Have you given to your electoral system the democratic foundation of my kids and assemblies? Have you facilitated the access of all to the representative chamber by assuring compensation to its members? Have you rewarded all members, repressed corruption, and introduced into the administration that severe and pure your morality, which renders authority worthy of respect, have you caused the influence of power to be exerted for the improvement of manners, 
instead of diminishing, have not crimes increased in frequency? Have you secured property by completing the operation of the Book of Assessments? Have you caused a thousand new industries to spring from the soil? Have you, during a long peace, finished half the works I commenced during severe wars? Have you opened new markets to commerce? Have you improved the condition of the poorer classes? Have you employed all the revenue of France with a single view to her prosperity? Have you reestablished the laws of divorce which protected the morality of families? Have you organized the National Guard in such a manner that it will be an impregnable barrier against invasion? Have you confined the clergy to its religious functions, far removed from political power? Have you preserved to the army that respect and popularity which it had so justly acquired? Have you not endeavored to degrade the noble mission of the soldier? Have you granted to our living relics of Waterloo the moral and the morsel of bread which belonged to them as the price of the blood which they poured out for France, the tricolor flag, the name of Frenchmen. Have they preserved that prestige and influence which caused them to be respected throughout the world? Have you secured to France allies upon whom she can count in time of danger? Have you diminished the burdens of the people? Your taxes of peace, are they not higher than my taxes of war? Finally, have you not weakened that administrative centralization which I established in order to organize the interior and resist the foreign enemies of France? No, you have preserved of my reign only that which was intended to be temporary and transient, and you have rejected all the advantage which palliated defects, the benefits of peace you have not obtained, and all the conveniences of war you have suffered and still suffer without its great recompensations, honor and the glory of my country.' 